Three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Nightcap. Welcome back, guys. Welcome What's back up? to another, another sports, special sports edition of the Nightcap. Welcome back, friends of the NFL. Nightcap. Uh, Matt and Jason, who are probably chomping at the bit to call me a piece of shit after <laughs> last week's games. So let's get this shit show on the road. <laughs> the goon squad is back. I mm-hmm. love it. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, no beating around the bush. Let's hop into it. Let's talk about last week's games. But right before we do that, if this is your first time watching the show, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Does us a favor. Also, leave a comment below. Let us know what you guys think. Tell us why we're right. Tell us why we're wrong. All of it. All the feedback is good feedback as far as we're concerned. And uh, yeah, but let's go ahead and hop into uh, the recap from last week, which was very rough, by the way, Ooh. in terms of our predictions. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can't call them all the time. Can't call them all the time. You guys come to us for hot takes, right? All right. So Bengals at Titans, uh, Bengals 19, Titans 16. I think we all got that one wrong, mm-hmm. right? Um, 49ers at Packers. Yeah. That was split. Me and Al um, both took the Packers. Uh, Jason and Matt both took the Niners and a very close game. And we'll, we'll get into that in just a second there. But it's nice to see the Niners moving on. Uh, Rams at Bucks. That was also another split. Um, me and Al took the Rams and Jason and Matt took the Bucks. Another close game. A lot of great games, honestly, last weekend. And then, of course, oh, we were Chiefs blessed at the Bills. Great. Shootout galore. Um, again, I think we all took the Bills on that one. Uh, it was a great game, close game, went to overtime. But of course, uh, the Chiefs ended up topping them 42 to 36. So, I mean, talking now just total total records right now so far for our predictions. Uh, nothing to write home about. <laughs> Al's coming in at four and six. I'm coming in at 500 at five and five. And uh, both Matt and Jason are at six and four. So last week was pretty rough on all of our our, our records there, guys. But um, which game um, surprised you guys the most? I'll kick it, kick it over to you first. Wh- which one stood out to you the most of all these games? Surprisingly, the one that surprised me the most was the uh, Bengals versus um, the Titans. Because I honestly thought the Titans would come out with a little bit more fire than that. But unfortunately, Tanning Hill reverted back to Miami Tanning Hill and blew the game. Like, two interse- like they should have left them on the field. To, they should cut them right on the field, like right after the game. So that was that's what surprised me the most, just because mm-hmm. the Bengals are so inexperienced in the playoffs. Thirty-one years to win the first playoffs, playoff game, and then the week after they win it again. So that's what surprised me the most. I honestly thought the the Titans would go on. What about you, Matt? Was there any games that uh, stood out to you the most? It was just the most surprising in terms of the uh, the final end score. And a lot of these games were maybe, close, right? So it yeah. wasn't like anybody got blew out. I mean, it, no, maybe not the cost. final score, but the way that Rams Bucks went was a little odd, right? Tampa Bay comes out super flat. They look like they're going to get completely brutalized, mm-hmm. and then the Rams, for whatever reason, had you know it. flashbacks to Week 18 and and blew a gigantic lead. <laughs> only to then have the Bucks defense just completely fall apart at the end of it. And the one guy that you have to cover, Cooper Cup, you let him get completely mm-hmm. behind your defense and get I let them that. get in the field goal range. To me, it was this weekend. My, the odd thing was the 49ers Packers game with the defenses playing the way they were because every other defense in this in this weekend played horrendously. I mean, the Bills defense couldn't stop a nosebleed. Neither could the yeah. Chiefs. I mean, everybody mm-hmm. seemed to have a difficult time. But the way that the Bucks Rams game played out stuck out to me. It it was just a really oddly played game. Yeah, it's a good point. I agree with you. That was a very strange game in the way that like it played out. Um, even though it was close, it was just kind of oddly anticlimactic <laughs> at the end there because it was just such a bizarre game to begin with. But uh, Jason, who do you got? Like, which game was kind of the most surprising to you? Well, I I, I mean, I obviously have two. I, the we picked, we all picked. I think we all picked the Titans to win the game, we thought, oh, maybe they could run the ball and, and, and mm-hmm. they could do what they had to do. But Tannehill was so bad. I mean, he threw, what, how many interceptions? Three? I mean, he was, yeah, three or four? I don't even know. Yeah, it was, it was three. And they three, sacked right? Burrow yeah. nine I mean, times and still could yeah, not win so that game. Yeah, he was awful. so yep. bad that he killed it. I mean, because they even had... I thought Deonta Foreman did a hell of a job coming in, you know, because you knew that Derrick Henry wasn't going to be fully ready, like to, to take the full workload. And I said that before as my prediction that I think, you know, Derrick Henry is going to get more around 20 touches. It's exactly what he got. So, you know, Foreman had to step up and he did, and he's almost the same type of player. He's a big guy. He's a big back. 
and he did a good job. But, you know, when you got your quarterback turning it over that many times, and I thought the Bengals defense did a pretty damn good job. They've been good in this playoffs. Like, so if you look at what they've done so far, like their defense has been pretty solid, but you know, I, I texted everybody that morning and I said the same thing. I'm like, I know I picked the Titans, but for some reason I have a gut feeling that they're just not going to have enough because Henry this is his first game back. It's not the regular Henry that, right. that they dominated with all year long. So that was that was a big thing for me. The 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 second one was obviously the Bills and the Chiefs game. Mm. It was the shootout that we could absolutely pray for. That's what we were saying. We're like, we we want it to be a shootout. It'd be so fun to watch. And that's exactly, but really it all happened in the last two minutes of the game and mm. overtime. So it was it was an insane game. And that last two minutes, you just saw the offenses do anything that they wanted to do at any time. And the biggest ter- thing for me that upset me was when the Bills scored and there was 13 seconds left. Why don't you squib kick it there? Why kick it into the end zone? Why let them have 13 seconds and three timeouts to try to come down the field and score? If you squib kick the ball down the middle, one of these right. other guys, not the regular return man, has to get it. That's and he has point. to come out and run it. It's already going to waste time. And mm-hmm. they're going to go into that lateral bullshit and they're going to lose the game. The game's over. Like if you squib kick it, it's over. So the Bills special team coach, in my opinion, should be fired. He just blew the damn game because they did everything that they had to do to win that game. That was an insane game. There's no reason that game should have gone to overtime. That's the biggest take that I had out of that game is why do you not squib kick it down the middle? Why kick it into the end zone and waste zero time? That yeah. that that to me makes no sense. If you guys want to chime in on that, please I, do. I mean, I get I get your point, but we definitely cannot let the defensive coordinator off the hook, man. They completely folded. Both I mean, teams. I mean both, defenses, both teams yeah. for sure, but both. with 13 seconds left, you know exactly what you have to do. And both teams, again, like you said, the last two minutes, 25 points in the last minute 57 of regulation. It was insane. Both teams went into soft prevent zone defense mode. The Bills should have came out and ran the exact defense they'd been running the entire exactly. you know first three quarters that helped keep the, the Chiefs in check, and they working. just didn't do it. I mean, there's videos out about how Travis Kelsey just pr- pretty much called his shot you know, and said, <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. And if you're playing man up defense on Kelsey, he's not going to be able to do exactly what he did. He played against the soft zone, knew exactly what they were doing with outside leverage. And he's like, I'm not going to cut this in. I'm going to run up the seam. They're leaving it open. Mm-hmm. It was just a failure on both defenses. Um, I know a lot of people are mad at the overtime rule because, you know, Buffalo didn't get the ball. But I mean, if your defense can stop somebody, that's not a problem. So I mean, if you can't stop anybody, that's your fault. I yeah. mean, look, it's a team going into that overtime rule. Yeah, going into that overtime rule, since it got implemented, the new rules got implemented in 2010. Out of the 11 uh, playoff games that went to overtime, 10 of the teams that won the coin toss won the game. That's not a very good ratio, guys. So I'm sure the NFL has smarter people than me to think of maybe changing the overtime rules, tweaking it a little bit just to make it a little bit more even. I mean, if, if it was the old overtime rules, I bet you'd be 11 out of 11. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Like, yeah. It was definitely it was the old overtime rules. Because you need a touchdown now before it was just a field goal. First goal it was wins, definitely an improvement, so, like, but maybe, maybe they, they, just, maybe they just need to look at giving them that, that full 10 minutes, no matter who scores. And you have to just run the course mm-hmm. of that 10 minutes. It, they won't do that because it's too hard on the football players. You already played a full game, and now you're asking them to go another full 10 minutes is, is a little bit much. I mean, I it could still happen in, even with the existing rules, right? I mean, there's nothing to keep it from sure, going. For there. sure, for sure. Yeah. But in the playoffs, it's not even 10 minutes. It's 15. Oh, is it really? I didn't realize It's that. a oh. full 15, yeah. All right, well, let's move on into uh, these upcoming games here, guys. Let's do it. We're up to the championship level here now. Bengals at Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Let's kick it off. Al, what are you thinking, man? This is a tough game to call just because I hate both teams, the Chiefs <laughs> for the Chiefs for obvious reasons, but also the Bengals because they had to cheat to knock off the Raiders. But oh I'm just going to go back to their week 17 game and that which was also a shootout and also just last week's uh, Chiefs game with no defense. I'm just going to have to roll with the Bengals on this one just because, man, from what? You know, I hate on them just because of what they did to the Raiders. But, you know, they're they're saying this throughout this whole playoffs is why not us? And now that I'm seeing it, why not them? They have a great connection between 
Joe Shiesty, Joe Burr, and Chase. They got Joe Mixon. I mean, they got a great defense during the playoffs, so why not them? I'm going to pick them over the Chiefs because, like I said before, fuck the Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The man's a philosopher. Matt, what do you got, man? Who do you got in this game? My head says I should pick the Chiefs, but I'm tired of seeing the Chiefs win, and I still maintain that it's really difficult to make three straight Super Bowls. Um, Tyron Matthews is going to be a game time decision and he's mm-hmm. really important to that defense. If he doesn't suit up, it becomes to me a no brainer that it would be the Bengals, but that Patrick Mahomes factor is, is, you know, a big one. Um, I, man, I just think Joe Burrow is a cool cat and I like watching him play football and I've liked the story of the Cincinnati Bengals. So for me, my head says chiefs, but I'm going with my heart and I'm going to pick the Bengals in the upset special. Got to go. Uh, I'm going to say the game is high scoring. I think it's going to be like 35, 33. Most definitely. All right, Jason, who do you got on this one? Um, this one's tough because when I look at, everything that I've seen from the chiefs, their defense is not up to par. Like they're not up to par. I don't see anything from them. That's going to say, Oh, you can stop somebody, but you look at the way Mahomes has been playing lately and it's hard to say, Oh my God, somebody's going to beat Mahomes. We're talking about a second year player, Joe Burrow. I love him. I, I think that, I think the Chiefs are a great young team. I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with for a lot of years to come. You look at that talent that they have now, with, with now that they got Jamar Chase. Oh, I mean, you look at Burrow, Chase, you got Higgins. I don't know if they'll keep Boyd, you know, in the long term. But when you look at that offense, Joe Mixon, you look at that offense, they're set up for success. And their defense has played actually pretty damn good this year. You look so far in the playoffs and they've done a good job on defense. And the only thing, the only gauge we really have for this matchup is week 17. And in that one, you know, really Burrow and Chase played a perfect game. They played a perfect game and they won by three. So with that being said, I mean, as much as I would love to see the Bengals win, I don't want to see the Chiefs again for a third straight year. I don't know if they're going to have enough. I don't know if that connection, they have to be perfect. They have to be perfect to beat the Chiefs. So are they going to be able to do that? In that game, it was in Cincinnati. Now we're talking about you got to go into Arrowhead and you got to win that game and you got to be perfect in order to win it. That's really what it's going to take because you got Mahomes on the other side. So I don't think it's going to happen. I I mean, I love it. I, I would love to see the Bengals. I would love to see the Bengals in the Super Bowl. I really would. But my heart and my gut says the Chiefs are going to be too much, especially at home, and they're going to win the game. Uh, I'm not going to give a score, but I think they'll win by anywhere from four to seven points. Yeah, I'm very much uh, with you on that one. Um, I, I like what Matt said earlier about his, <laughs> you know, he wants to go with his heart over his gut. I want, I, go, I want to go over, go with my heart too. I want to go with the Bengals. Uh, uh, Joe Burrow's been my guy all year. I was my fantasy quarterback, and this is a fun team. And I do not want to see the Chiefs again in the Super Bowl. But, but the intensity that we saw. I mean, last week we all thought the Bills were going to win and beat the Chiefs. Now uh, coming off that win off the Patriots, so I thought- just the way that they dominated. But looking at last week, you know, you can't, you just can't count Mahomes out. And him being at home, he just always seems to have just a little bit extra. He just always seems to have enough offense, right? What, no matter how many, as yeah. long as you're a second on the clock, there's enough time for him to get it done. No time. Man. And I don't know that I trust the Bengals defense enough. I think it'll be a shootout again. But I think just with everything involved in them being at home, I think Kansas City has enough again to get by and return to the Super Bowl on that one. So I hope I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll gladly uh, take that. But, yeah, I, I, I'm going to go with uh, the Chiefs on this one here as much as it pains me. But <laughs> let's get to the uh, the next game. Deja vu all over again. <laughs> Rams at 49ers. Al, you said you had a surprise for me. Who are you picking in this game, buddy? Look, um, I, I know what you guys are thinking. Here comes Al. Big ass hater. He's hey, just that doesn't sound like me. He's just gonna keep picking the Niners to lose until they eventually do. Well, guess what, guys? You're fucking right. 
I'm picking the Rams. <laughs> All right. I'm picking the Rams, not just for my own hateful reasons. I'm picking it for the American people because nobody, <laughs> what? nobody besides a small portion in Northern liberal Mecca, Northern California it's wants Northern. to see the Niners in the Super Bowl. And that, and nobody wants to see a boring ass Super Bowl. I get it. Defense wins championships. All right. But nobody wants to see that. They want to see Bills versus Chiefs back and forth, guns blazing. All right. This ain't the 80s. All right. This ain't the Bears. Do love the 80s, though. So <laughs> I'm picking the Rams. However, there's a lot of caveats here. Matt Stafford can't have a wonky game. He can't, he has to be on. So you want Matt Stafford not to be Matt Stafford? <laughs> so Matt Stafford's going to all of a sudden be somebody he's not when he's under pressure. <laughs> and then, but the main thing, though, is Cooper Cup has to be triple crown winner Cooper Cup. They can't use decoy Cooper Cup, pass blocking Cooper Cup. He has to be the Cooper Cup that got him to the dance. And also, it's a big ask, but they got to stop, at least limit the, the Niners defense from totally wrecking the game. So definitely a lot of big ass here, but I, like I said, I'm picking the Rams just for, because America needs to heal, guys. And the last thing America needs is a boring ass thinking Super Bowl, because I think that might break America. <laughs> All right, Matt, what you got? All right, listen, I'm just going to address what Al said. He said, only a select people in Northern California want the 49ers to win. I don't know. Better ask LA when they said they don't want to allow Niners fans to buy tickets to their stadium again. Cause we all know that. Hey, exactly. by the South. Yeah. There's a lot um, of bandwagons, you know, I get it, dude. When, when the Rams and Raiders left town, the 49ers filled the void and, and Incorrect. 49ers fans travel better than almost any team in the, in the national football league. That being Raiders. said, this is another, the Raiders don't even fill their own stadium, bud. Raiders. Um, Raiders. <laughs> You know what? Time out. I can't wait until next season when it's Raiders versus Niners. I think we should all go because I'll fight each and every I'm, one of you. I'm definitely stadium. going to that one for sure. <laughs> yeah, that would be anyway. badly for you, Al. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I will. I will. I will fist fight, fist the cuffs, all you guys. At the I game. promise, oh, folks man. at home, if that happens, I will get it on. If we'll get it recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Um, this is another. Cage, this is another chair, game. Ladders and ladders and tables. <laughs> You told though, all right? Yeah. Absolutely. This this is another game where I where you know it's a head versus heart thing, right? I know mm-hmm. it's exceedingly hard to ask a team to beat another team three times in a season and twice in their building. Um, it it's a very rare occurrence. Um, three uh, a season sweep three times has happened twenty one times, only four on the road. This would be number five if it happens. But we got to be frank. Jimmy Garoppolo has been playing like shit. Absolutely. He played like shit in the first half last week. I don't care what anybody says. I know there were a couple of drops, but he was three for nine for 43 yards. And he had a horrendous pick because he's apparently fucking allergic to throwing the ball away. He should have lived to play another down on that play rather than forcing it because he does not have the arm strength to do it. He took three sacks. He looked terrible. And it wasn't until the Packers defense was on their heels when it started snowing and conditions got worse that Jimmy Garoppolo was able to move the ball. He has six picks in his last four starts. His career playoffs, he's four and one, sure, but he has two touchdowns, five interceptions, and a career quarterback rating of 70.4. That being said, these Rams are, again, charm and soft. They allowed the Bucs back into the game last GBW, week. GBW, okay. GBW. Mm-hmm. Matt's famous you line. Have, you, have, you have 45-year-old wonder Andrew Whitworth is probably going to start for them at left tackle, but we all know Nick Bosa is going to work him up and down. Oh, that God. defense, the 49ers are going to get their five sacks for their third straight playoff game, and they're going to disrupt. And the one thing that they have to do is limit Cooper Cup. And here's the thing. As much as I hate Jimmy Garoppolo, he's due. He's due for a good game. He's going to look more like Jimmy Garoppolo when they blew him out 31-10. to 10. My head says it's really, really hard, but I cannot pick the Rams. I cannot pick another team in my own division. Okay. Mm. 49ers are going to win this one again. The faithful are going to show out to SoFi Stadium again. And it's going to be another road game for the Rams where they lose. So I'm picking 49ers 27, Rams 21. <laughs> All right. Jason, what do you got? Don't let us down. Well, you know? well, I mean, come on. The the 49ers have beat the shit out of the Rams in six straight appearances. Six straight. Even last year, when we had six wins on the entire year, every, the entire team was injured, beat the Rams twice. A part of you thinks, a part of me inside my gut says, hey, you know what? The 49ers have owned them so bad. The Rams are probably due, right? You think that. 
You would you, so you can always say that, right? Oh my Go god, with your gut. the Rams should be due, but they're not. You know why? Because they don't match up. They don't. They can't not stop the goddamn run, and that's their issue. You watch the that game; they were up seventeen to nothing. They were dominating that game, and then what happened in the second half? For you understand, running the football all over them and they couldn't do anything about it so that's the biggest problem there and and you know what let's go back to this Packers game we didn't talk enough enough about this so I have really got to chime in about this your your boy Al over here ran his mouth about the unvaxxed messiah Mm -hmm. he's gonna win big he's gonna go ape what happened what did he do did nothing he had his first drive First drive, they came down the field. I'll be honest. I was sitting there watching the game, and I was like, damn, yeah, we're sure. screwed. Like, we're screwed, you know, because I just watched them run the ball down. The, they just came down the field and scored like nothing. Then, all of a sudden, 49ers defense just started shutting it down. They were in his face on every single play. Vintage 49ers defense, just like they own the goddamn Packers for their whole goddamn life. Every single time the Packers play the 49ers in the playoffs, what happens? The 49ers whip their fucking ass. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And the, the, the guarantee. Y'all getting me fired that, up right now, Al. Run you, the this, football. you listen to this? Are you listening to this? You run the football and you get in Aaron Rodgers' face. If you're in Aaron Rodgers' face, he sucks. He can't get the job done in the playoffs. He never has and he never will. So that's the first thing I wanted to make that clear to you, Al, calling it the unvaxxed Messiah is going to win big. It's not happening and it never will happen. So let's go back to this Rams game now. What do they need to do to win? The same thing I say every single week. It's the 49ers philosophy. Run the football, play defense, get pressure on the quarterback. Matthew Stafford is a head case. If you can get in his face and cause one turnover, he's going to fucking fall apart the rest of the game. He's done it in every single matchup that we face them. So that's all you got to do. And the 49ers defense right now and their pass rush has been nasty. So if they, as long as they can keep that up, get in his face, rip people apart, and they're not going to be able to run the ball. Our run defense has been nasty. So I'm not even worried about Akers. I'm not worried about freaking Sony Michelle. It don't matter who they run the ball with. They're not going to be able to run the ball. So – their only chance is Cooper Cup. So what do you do as a defense? Do you focus on him and then maybe let Tyler Higby or somebody like Van Jefferson or OBJ make the play? Or do you just run your normal defense like they always have? And that's what the 49ers do. They're not, they don't panic. They're not, they're not like a team that's like, oh my God, we got to start doubling Cooper Cup because he's going to dominate. That's why they gave up, you know, in the week 18 matchup, they gave up that touchdown late in the game because they weren't doubling him and he, and Cooper's too good. He beat, he beat him, scored, but then your good old boy, Jimmy G he finds a way uh, as much as I hate Jimmy G. Let me say this. He makes a lot of terrible decisions. He never throws the ball away. That one play against the Packers just, I was like going off to everybody. Like I was like, Oh, are you kidding me? We're in field goal range. And you, Forced to throw you, you escape a sack basically. It was horrible. And then instead of throwing out of horrible. bounds, like you should, it's first and first and goal. You, instead of throwing out of bounds, you chuck it, you know, into the end zone and get picked. And it's like, dude, don't you know we're already in scoring position here? Like, come on, like that's a that's a rookie mistake that you should not make as a veteran quarterback. So, but every time that guy somehow drives us down the freaking field in clutch situation. He's clutch. I don't care what anyone says. Every time we get to that point, like where it's like games on the line, we need to make this drive here to score and get it either in field goal range or score a touchdown. He does it. He does it. And he, he's done it time after time. And that's why the locker room is behind him. So, I mean, when we look at, when we look at like the future and where the 49 is going to go at quarterback, I still think they're going to move on. I think they're going to trade him. But the locker room has him. Like, if the 49ers make the Super Bowl, like, what is that going to say if they go and trade their quarterback? If they're in the Super Bowl for the second, technically, the second consecutive year that Jimmy's been healthy. 
what what does that say if you go and trade him after that? Because this is really the second straight year that we're here in the NFC Championship game with well, Jimmy G. Well, in actually, in defense of that, Jimmy being healthy is a legitimate concern and a legitimate issue exactly. in itself. Well, so they I, took, I don't, uh, I don't they get took the shoulder off the injury right. designation, I don't get by the way. That right now. Look at everyone wrong. knows who I'm picking. I'm riding with the Niners on this one, of course. All right. They own the Rams, but I actually want to hear from Al, give him a chance to uh, to retort. Al, I'm conceding my time over to you. What do you got here after you just got lambasted right now? Well, I already you. said that I'm picking the Rams here, guys. So we I have to be I have to be the voice of reason uh, because, I, you know, it can't just be one big Niner circle jerk in here. What, you know what, what I'm saying? <laughs> So I have to be the voice of reason and picking the Rams just just because I feel like uh, Cooper Cup has just been being used as a decoy the past few games. And he's due to have another monster game, which I believe he will have this this week. I think he can have a monster game and the Rams. He still will lose. Have it on. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to matter. Still lose. Yep. I just think it's just a bad match. I mean, the only it, thing he wasn't exactly a decoy is, last week, dude. I'm sorry, Matt, what was that? He wasn't exactly a decoy last week. He had nine catches for 183 yards and a touchdown. Exactly. That, that's a pretty monster game. Yeah, he had a monster game. Exactly. So, I mean, I think everyone knows where we stand on this one here. Niner fans are going with the Niners. The hater is going with the Rams. But it is what it is. I guess we'll find out. The only thing that makes me slightly nervous is just, again, the health of the of the 49ers. There was a lot of limping going on at the end of that uh, mm-hmm. Packers game. But hopefully he seems just- okay, though. I mean, the only the biggest one I think is Trent Williams because he he, he says he told Kyle that he's going to play. So he Kyle says if he play, says he's going to play, he's going to play. My thing is, look, listen. Like I said, Jimmy, for as bad as he is, he's due. And there was somebody that released a heat map of where the Rams give up their big plays, and guess what? It's intermediate passes in the middle of the field. So Jimmy's going to have a chance to be well, able to supplement yeah. the run game. And and let's be real, yeah, Cooper Cup, you can you can have some catches and stuff like that. The biggest key to this game is Ambry Thomas playing. Um, they need him out there because you know Dante Johnson didn't look great at the beginning, uh, no. and then and when, he when he got hurt, Josh Norman had to come in, and they immediately picked on him. And if Aaron Rodgers throws a better ball, you know it might. But not he be didn't the best. give up any passes. He he very well could have though, because because Adams had him beat. It was bad commitment. Yeah, so, that one pass that he did defend, it was ugly, and he was grabby as all hell, like he normally yeah. is. So we don't want to. Yeah. Really so see so play, I but. worry about that, but again, the Rams, their defense. Jalen Ramsey's a monster. Like he's great. Um, Aaron Donald is usually great, but for whatever reason, Daniel Brunskill just eats his lunch for the Daniel Brunskill who can't block weird, anybody right? else. That is weird. Be able That's to like a phenomenon. Right Aaron there. Donald. It's really weird. I don't understand. It is it. weird. But uh, listen, you got the number three defense going against, you know, the Rams who again, Kelly Stafford had to, had to wear the nuts for, for Matt after the game and said, Hey, this was like a 49ers home game. He couldn't hear the plays. It's going to be much of the same. Vivid Seats is estimating that 70% of secondary sales are going to 49ers fans. So it's going to be another sea of red. It's going to be a different sure, game for Matthew Stafford to hear. It's going to be, a, I, you know, it very well could be a Rams win. I'm uh, In my head, I'm like, okay, three straight times is a lot to ask. That's tough. Yeah. But I have to go with my gut, and I would never pick another NFC West team, even if I thought they – I mean, the 49ers could be 1-16 going into the last week of the season against an undefeated team, and I'm picking the 49ers if the other team plays in the West. That's just yeah. how it is. So. And last time they won, they didn't have Trent Williams, right? They had Colton McKivitz, and he did just correct. enough to help correct. get that. So, and I, I never even gave my pick. I was going off on Packers and all this stuff, but obviously you guys know I'm picking the 49ers. But, I'm shocked. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's not a shock, but – we're getting super low on time, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and do a couple of rapid fire questions uh, before we uh, call it for tonight. All right, guys. Aaron Rodgers, talk of the town all week. What's his future? Yes or no? We'll go down the line. Is Aaron Rod- Will Aaron Rodgers be a Packers next season? Al, what do you think? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he left, but it wouldn't surprise me if he stayed, but I don't think he's staying. Okay, uh, I'll take that 50 50, maybe. <laughs> I think I think Aaron Rodgers is going the route of Tom Brady. I think they both retire. Wow, really? Wouldn't retire. surprise me either. Would not surprise me either. What about you? Uh, what about you, Gal? He's out. He's out. All right. <laughs> Tom Brady, is he coming back or is he done? Oh, retired. Matt? Giselle is making him retire. Same thing. He's speaking like he's already made the decision to retire. Mm-hmm. It certainly sounds like he's checked out. What do you think, Gal? I think he goes back for one more season. 
Because I mean, if if they have Chris Godwin and they have their normal team, I think they win they win the game. So I think he'll come back for one more and then he retires. Okay. All right. And then just in terms of the head coaching changes we've got going on here, Al, oh, what's the latest on the uh, the Raiders uh, head coach search? Oh, man, I wish we could have a lot longer, but you guys spent 50 minutes trying to convince yourselves that the Niners <laughs> were going to win. Um, it's tough because uh, the name that got traction during this whole week was I was very disappointed at was Josh McDaniels. And apparently he got so hot that Josh McDaniels was literally calling assistants from all over the NFL to come make the team to build a team, his team around the, the Raiders. But I guess something happened where they put a screeching halt to that, that he's no longer the, the chosen one. Because, yeah, that's going to... So I was very disappointed in that. I still think Harbaugh is just using it as leverage for a better contract. However, the Michigan defensive coordinator just left today to go to the NFL, to the Baltimore Ravens with Jim's brother, John. So that's very interesting also. So who knows? That's just weird timing considering Josh McDaniels. They were almost going to hire him plus... Um, Dave Ziegler was going to be the the pick for the GM, which he's pretty much the de facto GM at the Patriots right now. So, of course, if he got hired as GM, there he's going to bring over Josh McDaniels. So it looks like that that was already getting in the works, but something happened today where they said it's no longer in the works. So, and then you know, it's just very weird, like timing. To that All right. Wrap, well, I would like to get into more of the changes and the moves around mm-hmm. the league, but we're almost out of time here, so I'm going to wrap it up. But just mm-hmm. for everyone watching, stay tuned, stick with us, even after this championship weekend. Um, I'm sure there's going to be more moves, more hires prior to the Super Bowl. A lot to talk about. And of course, we'll be giving our Super Bowl predictions too in a couple of weeks here. So that's all I got for tonight. Um, everyone, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button before you leave. Leave a comment below. Let us know why we're right, why we're wrong. You guys' predictions. And uh, until next time, everyone, have a nice evening. Cheers. Have a great night, guys. See you next time.